Hello and welcome. Thank you for taking action for yourself. So your intimacy killer is pleasing. How is that going for you? I'm going to share what overpleasing is and how you can transform your intimacy killer into your natural superpower of generosity. That will result in authentic connection and real intimacy in all your relationships. My name is Matt and I'm a touch and intimacy professional and the author of the best-selling book Orgasmic Blueprint. I have helped thousands of people over the last decade to enhance their relationship and I come to notice that there are four main blocks coming up again and again that stop relationships from reaching their highest potential. There are so many different people and we all have different strategies to get our needs met. Pleasing is one of the four main blocks. They all are actually behavioral strategies and coping mechanisms we revert to when we don't express what we desire and when we can't say no. When we don't express our desire and boundaries, we can default these ways of behaving to gain some sort of pleasure, acknowledgement and appreciation to fit in or to create a sense of balance or personal power. Pleasing and overgiving is your survival strategy in an attempt to get your needs met. I want to reassure you that pleasing is a perfect normal part of every one of us and there's nothing bad about it. Overpleasing happens everywhere in society, within our family, relationships and professional structures because most of our interactions with others are based on wanting or not wanting something without being capable of communicating it. Most people default to a pleasing strategy when they either don't voice their real desires and instead overgive in order to get those desires met or don't voice their boundaries or limits. If you're a pleaser, it's extremely important to have awareness about those pleasing actions. Specifically the awareness of why do you go into action? Who the action is really for? Why do you can't say no? What need you are trying to get met? Let's look at what happens when we don't voice our real desires. Overpleasing can happen when you don't voice your needs and desires and instead do or give something nice to the other person so that they will do or give something back in return. Overpleasing often happens when we go into action without having a request from the other person doing something the other hasn't asked or might not even want. It's the default strategy of the do-gooder, the nice girl or guy, the martyr, the rescuer, wounded healer or the one who gives to get. Pleasing comes up when we want others to feel good all the time and it often results in depletion of energy and a feeling of burnout. Sure, many pleasers are naturally loving people and when they do or give to others, they come from or believe they are coming from a genuine place of love and care. Before going into an action, I encourage you to ask yourself who the action is really for. It is just to offer support and love to the other person? Or is there a hidden agenda, no matter how minimal, to get something back in return and get one of our needs met in the process? We often go into action for ourselves under the pretense that we are giving a gift to others. Do you ever do or give things telling yourself it's a gift for someone with the hope it will result in getting something back from that person? An example could be offering to give someone a massage. We often tell ourselves we are giving when actually it's us that wants that physical touch or the appreciation, affection or pleasure that might result from our giving. Giving is a beautiful way to express your love and care. The problem arises when it's not a pure gift and has an ulterior motive. So when you have an urge to do or give something for someone else, know who the action is for. If your action is for you in any way, express that. Examples could be, I'd love to give you a massage because I want to help you to relax and also want to feel close to you and get a cuddle at the end. I want to cook for you. I think we'll both get something out of it. You'll get a delicious meal and I'd love to be appreciated for my skills in the kitchen. What do you think? 
I'm here to listen to you and I'm hoping you'll be here for me when I need you. When we go into action to help or support someone and we are trying to get our own needs met in the process, one, it never sits well with the others when they sense your gift is about you and not them. Two, the other person has no idea what you actually want, so how can they give back what you are hoping for in return? Three, when we don't get back what we want in return, we tend to continue the circle of giving and giving. This results in nothing more than frustration, blame and burnout. Now let's look at what happens when you don't voice your boundaries and say no. Ask yourself, if you don't say no, what do you do instead? Do you give what the other wants and neglect your own needs? Do you say yes? Go along with whatever they want? Push through your resistance? Suffer in silence? Pretend that you want and enjoy it? Give more than you want to? How do you feel when you do this? The inability to say no usually results in anger, resentment and the urge to flee or chips away at our self-esteem. Former clients of mine shared what they do as pleasers instead of saying no and how that made them feel. This includes, I do it and feel resentful. I repress how I feel and internalize my anger. I endure it but feel cornered. I do it but disassociate and blame my partner. I submit to what they want and remind them when I want something back. I try to convince myself that it's okay with me, but it feels wrong. I avoid my real limits and pretend it's all fine, then regret it. At the root of all these reasons is the core fear of being rejected. And here's a vital piece of wisdom. Your pleaser strategy often supports other people's strategies to get their needs met. The pleaser personality often co-creates a dysfunctional relationship with the exploiting personality. This is someone who feels entitled. In this specific dynamic, we usually see the person with more perceived power, the exploiter, taking advantage of us as a pleaser. Another important question to ask yourself is, why is it difficult for me to say no? Reasons might include, they do so much for me. They'll think I'm weak if I don't do it. I like to be helpful. They need me. I want to be a good person. I don't want to hurt their feelings. I don't want to start an argument. I didn't realize I have the option to say no because I make myself responsible for their feelings. Now, if we don't identify our true desires and voice what we want or don't want, misunderstand always happens because permissions and agreements between people don't exist. Your pleasing intimacy killer causes you to miss windows of opportunity that could enrich your connections and overall well-being. While colleagues, friends or family members may be building deeper connections, you can feel disconnected and frustrated. And here's the thing. The impact of those missed windows gets greater over time. When you repeat old unnecessary patterns, you miss out on healthy interactions, connections and community. And here's what you can do about it. I invite you to shine the light of awareness to reveal this part of yourself rather than judge yourself and others. As long as awareness is present, you will know what motivates your actions and are more likely to be honest about how you relate with others. And thankfully, there are some easy practical steps to get beyond your pleasing strategies so that you can enjoy your relationships exactly as you want to. As you know now, most people have one or four condition strategies to get their needs met, instead of asking for what they want and expressing their boundaries. You might have one, and your partner, friends, family or co-workers might have other ones. To move forward, it is important for each person to understand their personal intimacy killer in order to transform them into superpowers. Now you might be thinking, how do you know all this? Well, each and every day I help people of all ages and stages of life to break through their intimacy issues. You might be wondering, how can I change this conditioned strategy and create more heartfelt connections? 
because you have taken the time to watch this video and to find out a little bit more about yourself and your relationship, I'd like to offer you a free 45 minute Zoom call where I'll share a step-by-step -step solution and help you transform your over-pleasing tendency into your natural superpower of true generosity. Together we'll discuss what plays out in your individual situation and get to the solution. You will discover what you can change right now to transform all your relationships. So please click the link to my calendar to book one of the available spots and I'm looking forward talking with you.